So the beast is coming down, is she? Yeah, this is the all important 12 feet that you don't want to pay in marina fees. So marina fees are rather different for 28 footers to 40 footers. And we can always claim to be a 28 footer because we can heave or steve, as is the technical term, the bowsprit out of the way. Excellent. Shall I give you another Sam Hurd quote? Why not? When uh, I first had the boat, I asked Sam how I was going to get the bowsprit up, how I was going to steer the bowsprit. He said, I don't know how you'll do it, but you could just pull on this rope, but you might be too weak. <laughs> it's, it's nothing to do with strength, it's just weight. <laughs> You'd be too weak. <laughs> and how long is that bowsprit? 12 feet. Now we need to bows it down. We bows the bowsprit down until it's pointing down. That is very stylish in the world, in the world of these uh, Cornish uh, work boats, the Falmouth work boats, the bowsprit has to tip down slightly. Attaching the uh, tack of the jib on its furler to the ring which I'll then pull out along the bowsprit and the ring uh, is covered in leather which is preserved with tallow which also makes it slide out very easily. designed by uh, Martin Hurd specifically for part-time yachties like myself who want to go sailing in the old traditional style but without all the trouble of a wooden boat and I bought this boat specifically to go to the Brest du Arne festival which is which we did last year and it turns out to be a very comfortable boat to spend several weeks on well, I started off uh, looking at different gaff rigs uh, and talking to people, and I, my, I had a completely open mind. Um, I looked at Cornish crabbers, I thought, no, they don't look quite the business. I looked at wooden boats, and um, a friend of mine said, yeah, I know a lot about wooden boats. Um, I had to set a match to most of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> I felt that maybe I didn't have the skills or the deep pockets required to get people to uh, maintain a wooden boat for me. So I've got a boat that requires very little maintenance, but it's very comfortable for cruising. It has heads, it has, it has bathrooms, bedrooms, fridge, cooker, you know, and you can live on it for the whole summer. Um, it even has a heater. And it's just what you need if you're going long distance cruising. And we intend to do the Mobillon uh, sometime. We're planning to go to the Scilly Isles this summer. It's long distance cruising at a very leisurely pace. This is a gentleman's yacht <laughs> and we do occasionally go racing, although I prefer to say parade of sail because we <laughs> the only prizes we've won have been the, the wooden spoon. <laughs> but the setup here is that the saloon, that's my territory, the forepeak, that's for the crew, and you have your own double bunk, you have your own heads, you have your own hot water and you can lock the door and you can leave the captain in his saloon to do the washing up and the cooking. Uh, she's known as a Herd 28. Um, she was built by the Herd family. Um, there was Terry and his son Martin and then his son 
Sam and they continue to work down in Milo uh, they had the idea of turning the Falmouth oyster dredger which is a 28 foot open boat into the sort of yacht that um, the holiday makers uh, from London would like to buy and sail about looking like a traditional gaffer and so she's 28 feet long she's about 10 feet wide and draft is five feet and the difference uh, in this uh, one of the later versions is it's a lead encased keel so the floor is slightly lower uh, the freeboard slightly more the headroom uh, is about six foot uh, throughout right uh, through into the heads. Well the rig's cut down so that she can be managed by um, a cruising um, couple uh, and she sails beautifully. She, 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 we calculate, all our calculations are based on five knots an hour, uh, five knots an hour over the ground as well. Mm. So it takes us about 12 hours to get to Cherbourg in other words. This boat from 20 yards looks exactly like a proper gentleman's yacht an old gaffer from the 1900s but once you get a bit closer you begin to notice the cheats obviously the big cheat is the fiberglass hull then when you go down below we've got the fridge for cold beer then we've got a yes. cooker then we've got heads then we've got hot running water and finally we've got the ember smash of heater so we're very comfortable down below up on deck We've got a, another uh, cheat. We've got a depth sounder, which I'm sure uh, our Cornish friends from the 1910 wouldn't have had. Anyway, we uh, don't rely on the lead any longer. We have a proper depth sounder. Uh, and we have uh, the biggest cheat of all, which is the chart plotter, which you can um, see and manage from the helm. And since we're on our way to the Silly Isles, I've updated it and I can tell you the Silly Isles is on the chart plotter just a mass of rocks so really quite useful to have the chart plotter where the helmsman can see it and not down below as it so often is on racing yachts uh, so that you have the navigator down below calling up to the helmsman uh, where the rocks are likely to be but on some of the boats, the helmsman's such a long way from the chart plotter down below that you have to have an intermediary uh, standing in the companion way relaying messages. It's, it's a bit like the situation in the First World War when the officer at the front sent a message back to the ammunition depot, send up ammunition, we're going to advance. What the officer back at the depot heard was, send up three and four pence, we're going to a dance. And that's the sort of confusion that arises when you have a series of messages being sent up from a chart table somewhere in the bowels of the ship. She's moored opposite the Folly, um, up the Medina River, opposite the pub, but does table dancing on Friday and Saturday night. <laughs> Have you got any pictures? <laughs> no. But Rowlands and the artist has done a graphic picture, um, albeit from the 18th century, uh, but it very much captures the, the, the uh, uh, spirit of table dancing. It's called The Dancer. It's a well-known picture. <laughs> and you, By my namesake. Would you join in? <laughs> no! <laughs> what could be more ridiculous than old men table dancing? <laughs> Dear, dear me. <laughs>